So what's good, TMG fam? It's your boy Ellen. I'm back with another reaction. How y'all feel? Welcome back to the channel. Salute. Now, I was listening to this interview the other day with this uh, ex-NFL, pro-NFL player, right? Hall of Famer. And he was talking about, you know, going fishing. You know, he was just sitting around with the guys, kicking it with the guys, and they were talking about going fishing. Well, then the combo switched to deep sea diving, and his whole facial expression went from smiling and laughing to seriousness. He said, he said, now, deep sea diving, he was like, that's my baby. He was like, but I don't play around with that. And then the other dude that was he was talking to was like, yeah, I fish and I deep sea dive. He was like, when I go fishing, I do all the funny little things like, you know, when you fish and I wiggle your pole, make you think you got something on the line and you jump up. But he was like, and that deep sea, he's like, I don't play around. So it's a certain seriousness that goes on about deep sea diving. You know what I mean? They gave me a, a, a newfound respect for it that I didn't even know about. You know, just by their sh sheer seriousness that they had on their face. So this video here is deep sea diver captures what no one was supposed to see. All right. So we're going to check this video out. If you new, hit that subscribe button and join the fam. Here we go. The majority of our planet is covered with deep and dark water filled with terrifying creatures and strange things. We might have discovered and explored a good amount, but there are still a lot of mysteries down there waiting to be seen. <laughs> Let's explore the strangest and most bizarre- and, and why are there tires just at the bottom like, like that? ...are things found underwater. From an 11-foot marble crucifix to a rare World War II fighter plane, here are the 15 unbelievable things found underwater. Number 15, 11-foot marble crucifix. This haunting yet amazing 11-foot and 1,800-pound marble crucifix first made waves on the internet in 2009. I don't know what I would have done if I'd have saw that, bro. I'd have freaked out. That would have messed me up. Not freaked out in the sense of being like, it's just freaked out to see that at the bottom of the ocean. Team, and many of you might not believe where it's located. This amazing sculpture is submerged under some 20 feet of water and ice, about 800 feet from shore in Little Traverse Bay off Petoskey. Anyone with scuba gear can easily see this life-size statue of a crucified Jesus Christ. Its haunting image is quite fitting for its backstory. The crucifix was created in Italy in 1956 by a family mourning the loss of their 15-year-old son to a tragic gun accident. However, when the statue was transported to the church, it was pretty apparent that it didn't survive the long journey. It had unsightly damages, including a broken arm, so the family decided that it was unworthy to honor their dead son. And so, instead of letting the crucifix go to waste, they sold it to a local diver from the Superior Marines Divers Club in 1962. The statue was then submerged in 65 feet of water to honor a diver who tragically drowned in Torch Lake. As time passed, the crucifix was later rededicated to everyone who had lost their lives underwater. More than 20 years later, it was moved further inland, where it's located to this day. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now. Number 14, Crusader Sword. It's you know, we're starting to see more and more swords discoveries here lately. Like, more than normal. Things that scuba divers always have an exciting day. After all, you'll never know what you'll discover underwater. In 2021, a scuba diver casually exploring off the coast of Israel stumbled upon quite to find. He discovered none other than a three-foot-long knight's sword, along with other treasures and artifacts. Pieces of pottery, anchors, relics, all of which date back between the 11th and 13th centuries. This crusader sword is such an incredible find, despite being submerged for 900 years. Although you can see that it's been underwater for a long time, it's been covered with a thick layer of shells and sediment. It might not look like much, but that layer slowly formed over centuries. The sword itself was about one meter in length with a 30 centimeter hilt. Inside the layer of sediment, the blade is still perfectly preserved. It's always great to discover underwater artifacts, especially things as significant as this one. Many centuries ago, this sword caked with shells and sediment was a powerful weapon held by a knight that tried to fight for what he believed in. Now, I want to back it up. Hold on. Shells and sediment was a powerful weapon. You walk up on that. Do you think that's automatically like your first thought in, isn't that that's a sword? It just, I don't know. It, it looked like something else. I, I wouldn't have thought that was a sword. 
I'd have probably just grabbed it and slung it and hit something. You know what I mean? Probably tore it up. Held by a knight that tried to fight for what he believed in. Number 13, underwater crop circles. You've probably already heard about crop circles. Mm -hmm. These are strange shapes and patterns appearing out of nowhere in the middle of fields. Initially, they've been thought as patterns created by aliens. However, it's been proven that this isn't the case. Some crop circles have been created not by extraterrestrial creatures, but by extremely talented human artists. But what about underwater crop circles? These patterns can often be found underwater. The very first ones were spotted in 1995 off the coast of southern Japan, and these weird patterns immediately made waves amongst the public. Many were perplexed as to what exactly they were. After all, they weren't found in a single location. It wasn't long until other divers from different countries claimed to have seen these mysterious circles. The mystery persisted for over a decade until 2011, when the culprit was finally caught. No, the mystery circles weren't made by a group of divers trying to fool the world, but by a male puffer fish. I know that it's quite surprising, but these creatures that are barely six inches long create these elaborate designs to woo a female puffer fish. I know, such hard work, right? Male puffers often spend seven to nine days constructing circles by repeatedly swimming in and out of the ring. They also use their fins to stir up fine sand particles and construct elaborate patterns. Once they're satisfied with the sand formation, they'll usually decorate the peaks with shell and coral fragments. The middle of this elaborate made circle will serve as the nest of the female pufferfish it will attract. I'd say that's a pretty sweet way of courting. I no also want to see him like them capture a video of him swimming up and then looking down at it and kind of like just sitting there admiring his work. That's when I kind of believe that that's who's doing that. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like sometimes, and it, it could be true, but it's a, a little piece of me is like, hey, y'all just trying to make me say it's a fish doing that just to throw me off. Number 12, artifacts in the wreckage of RMS Titanic. Also known as the Ship of Dreams, RMS Titanic set sail on its maiden voyage on April 10th, 1912. It was known as the most luxurious ship then, and endorsed as the grand and unsinkable Titanic. Unfortunately, the Titanic never had the chance to sail on another voyage after its very first. The Titanic tragically sank, and out of the 2,240 passengers and crew on board, 1,500 people lost their lives. Today, many people still recognize the name Titanic, but all that's left today is a tragic wreck. We still recover artifacts and relics from the wreckage, and each one has its own story. I still remember our teacher in third grade showing us that movie. Messed me up. You hear me? I just recently started getting on a boat cruising. That's how bad it messed me up. Expeditions found an old violin among the wreckage of the Titanic, and it's one of the artifacts with the most heartbreaking story. As the Titanic slowly sank, it was said that the musicians on board kept playing a sad symphony as if they already knew that they would die with the ship. The violin they discovered belonged to the band leader, Wallace Hartley, and although the violin was already in a sorry state, it still sold for a whopping $1.7 million during a UK auction in 2013. They also found a menu of the ship's last meal, which was also auctioned off in 2012. And just like the old violin, it sold for a very high price of $83,000. If you're curious as to what the passengers ate on their last day on the Titanic, the menu consists of several courses, including eggs argentui, chicken a la Maryland, oysters, cream of barley, poached salmon with mousseline sauce and cucumbers, and much more. Of course, these fancy dishes were reserved for the first class passengers. The meals of those in the third class were far simpler. Number 11, Yonaguni Monument. Ever since its discovery in the mid-1980s, this underwater rock structure near Yonaguni Island in Japan perplexed many scholars and researchers about its history and origin. A scuba diver first spotted the rectangular monument that was more than 165 feet long and about 65 feet wide. It was unlike any other rock formation around the area. It looked and See, that's what keeps throwing me off too. I, I keep wanting to think rock structure. But what if that's like an underground like laboratory or something like that, that that's just hiding in plain sight? We're so fascinated to discover the outer, you know what I mean? Just discover the rock that looks like this that we don't think like maybe something's inside, maybe it's a lab, maybe it's whatever, you know? Far more precise, it had straight lines and angles, and it also allegedly had carvings on it. 
Many believed that the mysterious stone formation was a man-made stepped pyramid, but many scholars also had different theories. Some say that the Yonaguni Monument is a submerged ancient city that could have possibly been the home to a lost civilization that disappeared at least 5,000 years ago. There are many ancient structures found underwater, including Bea and Rome, so this theory isn't really impossible. However, there isn't enough evidence to prove that the Yonaguni Monument really is formally a part of an ancient city. Instead of an ancient civilization, the Yonaguni Monument may have been formed simply by the tectonic activity on our planet. Meanwhile, the holes and the scratches may have been formed by underwater eddies, which are basically water that moves in a circular pattern. Regardless of how this formation came to be, it's still pretty amazing to look at. Number 10. Underwater Temple Garden Located in Pemoteran, Bali, this underwater temple garden is definitely one of the most amazing things found in the ocean. This emerged temple was discovered in 2019, and the whole world was surprised. Apparently, this incredible temple was built 5,000 years ago. But because of a volcano eruption and the rising level of seawater, the magnificent structure became submerged. Or at least, that's how the popular story goes. When a photo of this underwater temple first hit the internet, many people excitedly claimed it as an ancient temple. The reality, however, is a little bit more anticlimactic. This underwater temple is known as Taman Pura, Taman which means garden in Indonesian, and Pura meaning temple in Balinese Hindu. This temple is no ancient structure. Instead, it's the creation of Chris Brown, an Australian that has been living in the Pemataran area. He made this dive site together with Paul Turley. Both of them and the other contributors built this dive site to promote diving in the Pemataran area. The result is quite positive. The whole compound contains magnificent statues. And you know how mad I would be? Like furiously mad thinking I discovered something, done went and searched up, researched who I need to contact to get down here, get them down here just to find out that this was all designed and planned, set up by an artist. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I try to hunt them down. And in time, it became an actual underwater temple that not only helped the area to attract more divers, but also helped the biodiversity underwater. Number 9. Amberjack Hole The Amberjack Hole is a mysterious blue hole located 30 miles off the coast of Sarasota, Florida. Its rim is approximately 112 feet below the surface of the water and extends down to 236 feet. This is considered an advanced dive because of its depth and its distance from the shore. If you already fear the ocean, what I'm about to say will probably make you more nervous. But the ocean opens sometimes and consumes areas of the seafloor. It's pretty similar to sinkholes on land, similar to those that sometimes consume oh. homes in Florida. Unlike sinkholes, these gaping openings in the ocean are called blue holes, and we don't know much about them to this day. Blue holes are usually filled with a high diversity of underwater plants and animals. But aside from this, we don't know what else is inside them, how many there are, or where they'll show up. To this day, there are still a lot of things we've yet to discover about these blue holes. But who knows? Maybe we'll discover more things about them soon. Number 8. World War II Silver in 2013, a British-led team of divers successfully completed the deepest salvage operation in history. The wreck was found in 2011 about 300 miles off the coast of Ireland, and salvaging the ship was no easy task. After all, it was by far the deepest salvage operation, which means this wreck was far more difficult to reach than the Titanic. Initially, they sent an underwater robot to survey the area. They tried to recover what was left off a British merchant ship that was sunk during World War II. They found a staggering 61 tons of silver worth about $36 million from the wreckage. It was no easy task to haul about 1,574 silver ingots, but it was well worth it. On the day the ship named Gersapa sank, it was en route from India to Liverpool, England. It transported important merchandise including tea, iron, and of course, the valuable silver ingots. Incredibly bad weather and insufficient coal led the steamship to break away from its military convoy off the coast of Ireland, and it wasn't long until it was attacked and sunk by a torpedo. Number 7. Tire Graveyard. Tire graveyard. Coral reefs are incredibly important. Over half a billion people depend on reefs for food and protection, as well as a major source of income. Coral reefs provide an essential ecosystem for underwater creatures and protect coastal areas by reducing the power of waves hitting the coast. The Earth's oceans also support the lives of more than 3 billion people. 
Without the reefs or the ocean, the entire planet would suffer. For this reason, many are now actively trying to preserve coral reefs and reduce waste in our waters. And so it's quite heartbreaking to see thousands of tires in the ocean. This tire graveyard is located off the coast of Fort Lauderdale, Florida, and the whole site was supposed to be an artificial reef called the Osborne Reef. The initial intention of the project was novel. It was an ambitious expansion project that used old and discarded tires. People would discard their old tires and rest easy knowing that the tires they dumped provided additional habitats for marine life. Sadly, instead of nurturing the biodiversity underwater, it ended up doing more harm than good. After seeing the results, or lack thereof, the United States military took it upon themselves to retrieve the tires, using the operation as diving and rescue training as well. As of 2009, only 73,000 tires have been recovered. Two million tires were originally dropped underwater, and to this day, about 700,000 tires still remain in the Osborne Reef. The Osborne Reef isn't the only artificial reef constructed using old tires. Similar reefs have been made in Indonesia, Malaysia, Australia, and Africa, and each one had bad consequences instead of positive results. Number 6. Cannons of Pirate Blackbeard Many of us have read or watched stories about pirates. Perhaps you know about a fictional pirate named Blackbeard, but did you know that he actually existed a long time ago? Edward Teach, or more well known as Blackbeard, is Yeah, that's why I'm starting to learn. Like a lot of those pirate stories we were told and came across back in the day, it was some truth to a lot of that stuff, man. It was really based off of true stories. Notorious English pirate who sailed the Caribbean during the early 18th century, which is considered the golden age of piracy. He's most known for riding the vessel named Queen Anne's Revenge. Blackbeard has quite the reputation. Just like pirates in fictional works, he and his crew don't really have the most stellar or positive history. For one, many claim that Blackbeard had as many as 14 wives. He always had swords, knives, and pistols in his possession, ready to attack anyone. In fact, people who saw him fight often claim him as the devil in battle. His story might not be the most positive, but artifacts related to him are still pretty important. Just like the pirate he is, one of the things he left behind is a 300-year-old cannon known as C-13. It's approximately 8 feet long and weighs a staggering 2,000 pounds. The people that found the cannon never expected to see it during their dive. When the huge artifact was initially released, the entire thing was caked with sand, barnacles, and shells. The huge cannon attracted several curious onlookers, but it was safely retrieved in the end. Number 5. Christ of the Abyss I'm still tripping off of 14 wives. A anybody else still stuck there with me? <laughs> that's, that's what I'm... 14? Sheesh. If you're unfamiliar with underwater statues, seeing a 9-foot tall bronze statue of Christ about 25 feet deep underwater can be pretty shocking. After you get over your initial surprise, this statue is actually hauntingly beautiful. This bronze statue, known as Christ of the Abyss, was initially lowered into the water off the coast of Key Largo, Florida on August 25, 1965. The entire statue weighs around 260 kilograms, but the concrete base it's attached to is a hefty 9 tons. There are two other bronze sculptures similar to this one in the world. One was placed in the Mediterranean Sea on August 22, 1954, and the other in Grenada in 1961. And now it's time for today's topic. The deep sea diver captured what no one was supposed to see while he was exploring an underwater wreck. Out of the blue, a body partially sticking out of a submerged aircraft caught him off guard. It appears that the divers didn't anticipate the strange wreckage, and they were all horrified upon seeing the hideous body. I'd be pretty horrified too, to be honest. When this photo first hit the internet, many conspiracy theories began to circulate around this photo. However, after investigating, we found out that the corpse shown in this photo is actually just a dummy used by underwater rescue unit training. Some amazing people out there train to effectively rescue people in the water. However, some people are also brave enough to do underwater corpse retrieval training and commit themselves to rescuing corpses underwater. That's quite a noble job, if I say so myself. Definitely. As always, comment down below with the hashtag today's topic and let us know your opinion about what we just showed on screen. With that said, let's keep things moving. Number 4. Underwater Steam Engine The steam locomotive is one of the most important inventions in the world. It served as the catalyst of change and helped us progress and develop. The steam engine made it possible to transport people and goods faster and more efficiently. In 2013, 
Archaeologists announced that they had discovered an underwater train graveyard off the coast of New Jersey. There, they found not one, but two incredibly rare locomotives that date back from the 1850s. The two locomotives were amazingly preserved despite being submerged under 90 feet of water for over 100 years. Finding these trains made many people ecstatic, but it also perplexed a lot of historians and researchers. No one knows how exactly the trains ended up in the location of the wreck. There are no historical records of them being lost at sea, nor were there records of any cars going missing. It might be possible that the trains were being transported on a ship, but were washed away because of a bad storm. However, it's still pretty suspicious why there are no reports or any records that they have been lost. Perhaps we've discovered a long-forgotten mishap by a worker? I guess nothing remains a secret after all. Number 3. Atlet Yam Off the coast of Atlet in Israel So nobody knows nothing? It's kind of hard to believe, you know what I mean? Sometimes I just don't feel like buying that. It nobody knows. Somebody knows, and it's it's a reason they were down there. And then when it when they get discovered, everybody's like, "Oh, those were down." No, come on, man. No, no, y'all can't fool us like that. Israel lies an ancient Neolithic settlement uh -huh. that's between eight thousand nine hundred to eight thousand three hundred years old. The settlement called Atlet Yam has the earliest known evidence of an agro-pastoral marine system. Thousands of years ago, a group of people sustained themselves not only by farming, but also by raising livestock and harvesting the blessings of the ocean. Underwater excavations of the site uncovered rectangular houses, a well, and several artifacts, including a human skeleton. The most important feature of Atlet Yam, however, was a stone semicircle containing seven megaliths, each weighing 1,300 pounds. Each stone had cup marks worn into them and were arranged around a freshwater spring. Such formations indicate water rituals. This further proves that people back then utilized not only farming and raising livestock, but also marine provisions. It appears that as time passed by, the water in the well became contaminated with seawater, which forced the inhabitants of the settlement to leave. Slowly but surely, seawater started to rise up and submerged the entire settlement as well. Number 2. Hunting Camp in 2014, a team of scuba diving researchers made an incredible discovery below the surface of Lake Huron. They found an elaborate network of hunting blinds as well as animal herding structures that date back roughly 9,000 years ago. Back then, Lake Huron wasn't as deep as it is now. At that time, lake levels were probably 250 feet lower, which means a narrow bridge of land was visible running from one side of Huron to the other. Amazingly enough, our ancestors 9,000 years ago hunted caribou in such an organized manner. The hunting grounds they found had an elaborate array of linear stone lanes and V-shaped structures that helped people back then corral and enclose caribou herds migrating across the exposed land bridge. Our ancestors back then seemed to have modified the shapes of the hunting camp depending on the season. Number 1. World War II Plane wow. As the saying goes, there are more planes in the ocean than submarines in the sky. In 2018, divers announced that they had found a rare World War II plane on the floor of the Coral Sea, almost 3,000 meters deep and about 800 kilometers off the eastern coast of Australia. The Battle of the Coral Sea was the first pure aircraft battle in history. All the ships in battle attacked their enemies purely with aircraft, without directly seeing each other's ships. This is why finding the wreckage of a plane that participated in the battle is extremely important. The researchers discovered the wreckage of the USS Lexington, which was an aircraft carrier. Not long after the discovery, however, they announced that they had also found the final resting place of 216 U.S. soldiers and airmen that lost their lives in the Battle of the Coral Sea. Without the sonar and seafloor mapping instruments we have today, this discovery wouldn't have been possible. The same goes with the advanced submersibles that let us see hundreds to thousands of feet underwater without the need to go down there ourselves. Many of these discoveries wouldn't have been possible without the brave divers and the technology we have today. We may have discovered plenty of things underwater, but perhaps as our technology continues to advance, we'll get to see more and more interesting things that have been left forgotten underwater. What do you think of these underwater discoveries? And which one shocked you the most? Let me know about your thoughts in the comments. You know, thinking about those those uh, planes that were underwater, man, we often forget because we've checked out several World War videos on this channel, man, and just the the whole kamikaze situation and all that type of stuff like that. Not thinking about that a lot of those planes are still sitting under underwater.
You know what I mean? So, man, I salute all those divers, man, that, that put their lives on the line to go down there and research and find and discover certain things, man. Again, like I said at the beginning of the video, bro, that's a serious thing and a dangerous thing they're doing at the same time, bro. So I, I tip my hat to them, fam, uh, and very, I'm very appreciative of them, man, and can't wait to see what technology allows us to continue to go further and discover more that's under the, underwater. So y'all get at me in the comment section, man. Let me know what you thought of this video and uh, stick around and stay tuned, man. You know more coming. It's your boy L. I'm gone. Peace.